Okay. I think we should be good. And hopefully my audio sounds better because now I have an actual mic. So that's pretty epic. <laughs> well, not like a, oh, let's turn that down. Not like a, like a big mic, but like I have a, I have a lav mic. So it's like one of those clip on ones. So hopefully that sounds a little bit better. Um, but hello to everyone who's in early. Man, we got quite a few bunch of you want back art art apparently. <laughs> um, but hello, welcome into everyone. Uh, who do I see? I see Adam, Suzami, Poppy, Frida, Blood Ryu, and Josh Stubbs. Welcome in to everyone who waited for a while. Um, glad to have you here. Today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be... Crisp sound. Okay, good. I'm glad. It's like, it's so scuffed. I have like a mic clipped onto another mic. So it can like be right in front of my face, um, but I'm glad it sounds good. Um, today we're going to be doing stuff because it is now the summer. We just finished our, um, we just finished our, uh, animal series. And now we are going to be going into our summer streams and our summer streams are going to be a little bit different, um, compared to our non-summer streams. Hello, dinner. Um, compared to our, um, you know, not summer streams where we started off with like a big lesson and then we got into the um, illustration portion. We're going to be focusing on mostly just the illustration um, for our summer streams where it's going to be mostly um, just you guys are going to be watching my process. Mics and mics and mics. Yeah, honestly. Um, so you're going to be watching a lot of my process um, rather than getting this huge, huge, big lesson. Um, but before we get going with that, Let's talk a bit about the studio. So if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below, like our Discord, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And check out our website for our class offerings. Uh, because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are, they are gone. All right. See, I made it. Yeah, you did. I'm excited to learn how to make a background. Let's go. Hello, Runia. Ooh, welcome into Runia. Runia, one of our lovely studio instructors. Um, she teaches mostly the traditional artworks, so it's like the other side of art. <laughs> um, hello, Frida. Hello to everyone in. Ooh, yeah, we've got a lot waiting today. I'm glad. I love background art. Um, so I'm not really going to be talking about... Thank you, Jesse, for the tutorials. No worries. Ah, Kiara's in as well. Hello. Um, so I'm not going to be talking too much about the lesson portion like the lesson quote unquote is just going to be talking a bit about how my brain process goes um when it comes to drawing a background right so mostly oh goodness this is the wrong shape so this has already been talked about a bit in our composition stream which you should be able to check out afterwards if you have not checked it out yet let's check this for a minute uh, what was I going to name this layer? Sure. All right. So if we kind of, if I draw something really, really quick, let's use the pen brush. I don't have Discord or Patreon. Discord is free. Patreon is not. But if you ever wanted to support, join the rest of the art nerds on the, on the Discord. I'm pretty active on there, so if you ever wanted to see my texting style, I guess you can join up on the Discord. Backgrounds are one of my weakest points. I'm really excited for the stream. I used to have backgrounds as one of my weakest points. I started to get really into them this year, or like not this year, but maybe a year or two back. But before that, I hated backgrounds. I would avoid them so much. But now I'm like, yeah, backgrounds? More. <laughs> I love backgrounds so much now even though I never used to. I love the landscape, so I have to try this one out. Yeah. I learned a lot about backgrounds through Jesse. I'm glad, Jay. Jay, both our mod and our one of our lovely designers. Jesse, I really need a background for an animation beam. Yeah. The thing with backgrounds is that there are so many, like, 
things to keep in mind. Because nothing is ever 100% concrete. Sometimes people like have different methods for drawing backgrounds. Sometimes there are other things that they like to do, right? I have a very unorthodox way of drawing backgrounds, but I think that's with most things that I draw, to be honest. <laughs> All very strange and unorthodox. Hello, hello. I'm glad y'all are in. Sorry, I want to do this real quick before we actually get into the illustration, because um, if you weren't here immediately in the beginning, we're skipping for our summer streams. We are skipping the lecture portions. We are mostly going to be just illustrating. So you're going to watch my process. You're going to see some, there's going to be more fan arty stuff during the summer, um, I believe. Yeah, we have a few fan arty streams that are being planned as well. There's some anime ones. I think there's a superhero one as well. Um, but stay tuned, because there's going to be a lot of those as well. More of our requesty kind of streams, where you get to request during the stream what I'm going to be illustrating. This is not going to be one of them. This is going to be kind of our slow transition <laughs> into the switchback. But yeah. Great job. Keep going. Thank you. This is not the final illustration. This isn't even close. Um, I'm great. A bit sleepy, but I'll manage. That's me every day, so I understand. Give me thy notes or perish. Don't worry. This one's just really, really quick. So when we're doing backgrounds or anything kind of backgroundy, right? Landscapes as well. Any kind of composition like that. There are a few things we want to keep in mind, right? So our background. Because backgrounds, backgrounds are just like a very general term, but they are actually part of, you know, a full three-tiered kind of explanation. All right, so we have our background, which is things farthest from the viewer. We have the middle ground. Often where focal point is. And then the foreground, which is where Things are closest to the viewer. Right? So the background are all the things that are kind of in the back, right? They don't have as much detail. They're just kind of there, right? The middle ground is often where our focal point is. And that's where it's like everything in between the foregr foreground and background, right? And our foreground is like all the stuff that's kind of, it either frames the composition or it's just really, really close to the viewer, right? Ah, hello, welcome. Oh my goodness, so many more people. <laughs> Background, middle ground, foreground. We're already going 3D. Yes, we are. I saw fan art as background, but fan arts are coming up though. My phone is at 3% and refuses to die. I hope it doesn't. Um. Uh. Yes, Jay recently got his second dose of the vaccine. Um. I got mine a little while ago, so I'm fully vaxxed now. Wee. Um. My whole family is actually, which is really nice. Take fan art because it is the summer live stream will be focused on. Yes, quite a few of them will be. Um, quite a few of them will be um, fan art focused. But in terms of the lesson portion, that's literally all I wanted to say. Nothing else. So we're going to be jumping straight into the art. So let's go straight into what I'm going to be drawing today. Um, Jesse kind of mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the actual illustration. So if you took part in the poll, then you would know that um, this week we are going to be um, illustrating Japanese rice patties, right? So that's what won the poll. If you would like to participate in future polls, be sure to subscribe so you'll get notified or also join the Discord where we'll notify you there when a new poll is posted. So we all voted for Japanese rice patties. And if you've never seen them before, I have a bunch of references off to the side. Japanese rice patties are gorgeous, right? 
Look at how beautiful these are. And this is where, you know, rice is grown, right? They're on little cliff, cliff edges, right? And these things are beautiful. I'm super glad that they won because <laughs> I'm super excited to draw them. I already have wheels turning in my brain for what I would like to illustrate for this one because I'm also a really big fan of green compositions as much as I work in a lot of cold blues and purples and pinks um I love like greens and um yeah I love green <laughs> yes I voted that good 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 so let's get going then let me start with my first sketch file because I'm probably going to end up doing more than one um because I'm actually going to be focusing on really making this nice this time because now I have more time. Yeah, a lot of other staff got their second dose this week and half the team were KO'd. It's true. Okay. I'm lucky that, like, my um, side effects were, like, during the night. So I was, like, pretty... From, like, 9 p.m. till 5 a.m., I was, like, out. But after that, I was perfectly fine. So it was like during the day, I was okay. <laughs> so I'm lucky. Um, okay, how am I going to plan this? Because I have these guys over here. I want to see how this can work. Can I pop out the chat? No, not right now. That's okay. Um, yeah, because I still want to draw a character in this too, right? I don't want it to just be... You know what? Let me change to this as my reference image. Because as much as I like the deep blues of the one that I have, I'm kind of more looking at a different one. Let's take this reference instead. You guys can't see my screen. And of course my headphones died. So they always do. Oh no, maybe they didn't. Maybe they just shut off because nothing is playing through them. Hang on. Oh, they didn't die. They just stopped because nothing's playing through them. Man. Okay. Let me. Okay. We're good. Yeah. I'm going to use this reference instead because this one has a lot of these kind of like winding roads. And that's what I'm feeling. So I'm not going to draw any... Let me zoom out real far. I'm not going to draw any um, what's it called? Perspective lines for this one. Mostly just because I don't think it needs it currently. I'm just going to kind of block out how I want everything to look currently. <laughs> technical difficulties i love these headphones but sometimes they can be so like finicky just because of like the way that they operate let me see if i can make it so then they're not so quite as annoying let's see can i do this it's just so then my they don't shut off yeah and then you guys probably can't hear that okay good Good, good, good. All right. Let's keep going then. So when I'm doing any kind of like background or anything kind of big, um, I try to make sure that my entire canvas is like really zoomed out. Because that makes me not focus on anything too hard. Because if I do that, then I end up kind of losing track of what I'm doing and it ends up looking kind of wonky and I don't want that. I'm at 2%. Maybe you should plug in your phone. I feel like that's a good idea. <laughs> Tell me if my mic is too loud, by the way. I, I turned it up. Jesse, I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> Tell me if my mic is too loud, by the way, because I turned off my audio because I was listening back to a lot of the past live streams. And my mic was really quiet. So let me know if I should make it quieter or louder or anything like that. Because I don't want my audio to be like too intense, you know what I'm saying? But I also don't want it to be like where you have to strain your ears to listen to me. Speed run any percent, get the charger. Thank you so 
too much for the tutorial. No worries. I love doing backgrounds. Like this is going to be a really fun one because I haven't done like a really big kind of like green background in a long time. I might have got a charger. Epic. Hey, you sound good. Thank you. New mic. Courtesy of Lovely Faye. I got a love mic, so. Now I have something a little bit nicer. <laughs> you sound good? All right, cool. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling this like tiered thing and then I want characters here. Kind of go with my rule of thirds. Are there, because I know that it's very like, oh, is that a house? Oh no, those are just, those are just rocks. Okay, <laughs> I was like, no, are there houses? I don't want to leave that out if there are. Because I want to draw a character too, because I am. I will draw a character if I ever have the opportunity to. Okay. I'm gonna be if you guys were here for the blending stream, I'm gonna be using that same character. Mostly because um the non-human parts of him are based off of a um a creature from Japanese and Chinese mythology, so I feel like it would fit a little bit. And also his palette has a lot of reds, so I think it would match, make it look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna use another layer actually, just so then it makes it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. Jesse, will you make a Photoshop tutorial? I don't know. I kind of wanted to, but I you're gonna You know what? We'll think about it. I have been drawing animations for several months, but it's too hot and I do not want to finish it. Plus I have problems drawing the background and landscape. I understand. Like, just like no motivation to do something anymore. And you, you know what? Unless if you have like a, like a timeline attached to it, that's totally fine. You know, like if sometimes you just lose interest for a project and that's okay. Especially if it's just something personal, that's totally okay. The background looks like travertines without the colors. I don't know what those are. Why did this zoom all the way up? Yeah, I'm trying to mimic these. So that means that I'm going to have to drop water. Oh no. <laughs> I guess that means I'm going to be rendering water today. Maybe drawing some reflections. Jesse, thank you. No worries. Yeah, if there's enough interest for a Photoshop tutorial, we can definitely make it happen. Um, it's just that not a lot of people, on the, other than me, <laughs> use Photoshop in terms of our viewers. So, but if y'all actually want to see me make a Photoshop tutorial, I definitely can. It's going to be a lot longer than the other ones, though. What about you, Jesse? Do I make animation memes? No, I don't. I'm not an animator. Um, my best friend is, but I am not. At the end of the day, I am more of just an illustrator, storyteller, but, like, I cannot. I, I'm not good at animation. <laughs> like, at all. I don't have the patience for it. How am I going to draw his arms? Because I wanted them to, like move but i'm not sure how i'm gonna do that now let's give him the little chicken too <laughs> hi hi welcome back poppy how am i gonna do this because part of me wants to have him holding something Oh, actually, that's a good idea. If I have him, like... Yeah, if I have him holding a couple of things. I'll give him, like, a rice bundle. <laughs> like, a bundle. And that way, then it's, like, a little bit easier. 
Let's do this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Does that mean I have to make a folder inside a folder? Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right, sketch pass two. Because I don't want to spend forever on these other ones. I might have to make like three different sketch passes. We'll see how intense I decide to do this. How are you guys doing? I'm doing all right, Poppy. I hope you're doing good too. All right. Yeah, now let's make this a little bit cleaner because. So usually I only do more than one sketch pass if like, if I'm like really into an illustration. Love your art style, thank you. Um, because some most of the time I just think more than one sketch pass is overkill. <laughs> I'm very much like a I'm very few amount of layers type of person. Like you wouldn't like it's kind of I'm kind of breaking my own rule by doing way too many layers now. It's making me uncomfortable with how many layers I'm using right now. Um, but yeah, if I'm really into an illustration, then I'll use more than one layer or more than one sketch pass for the layer. These are gonna be a lot of like, cause this is very mossy. It's like grass, but it looks like moss. All right, and then these are like watery. Your art style is really cool. I wish you could, I could draw like me. Thank you. Um, It's really just all practice, right? I've been drawing for like my whole life. So <laughs> I'm very, <laughs> I've been honing my own work for a while, I guess. This is only the sketch as well. It'll turn out better once it's actually being lined and completed, I suppose. I am probably going to line this one. I'm probably going to make it look like... Rice fields just make me think of, like, Ghibli movies. Everything mundane. I think, like, because... Um, I think it was Miyazaki who said, like, he wanted um, to really show the beauty in mundane tasks as well, right? Because a lot of Ghibli movies are, like, farming and you know, just traveling and doing like stuff that are going on walks through a forest, right? It's like things that seem kind of boring on the surface, but there's a lot of beauty that's in them as well. And so like every time that I draw something very green or very like mundane, I try to channel my inner, oh, I hit my mic. <laughs> I try to channel my inner, um, bye. Um, thanks for joining. Um, I try to channel my inner Ghibli. When that happens, you know, when I have to do something a little more like this. See, the sketch for the rice patties is not that hard. It's like layers of these, right? It's kind of like stairs the way that they are. I'm kind of taking some of my own liberties into this as well. Because these like the pathways that are here are going like underneath the rice patties how can you put a photo like a window this is the reference window so you're gonna have to go up to the top it says window um and then you'll find something that says reference you'll be able to turn that on and then you just gotta open up a file from your uh computer and it should be in there channel it and feel the rice field feel the rice field i would love to visit a rice field i've never been to one before to be fair, I've never been outside of, like, the Americas. <laughs> like, I've been down to South America, um, and of course I've been throughout North America, Central America, but I've never been past that. Like, I don't travel much, but I would love to. I'm trying to make this really look like kind of like a staircase. I'll probably have to fix it afterwards though because this is not really working, but I'll try to figure it out. See, my, my background process is like, eh, that doesn't really work. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> Understand, thank you both, no worries. Yeah, 
because these are like very greeny. It makes it more easy for me to draw something. Yeah, I have two screens, so it's like I can kind of just open it on my second screen and look at it that way, like my reference. Um, but yeah, having the reference window, it's only, it kind of annoys me that I can only have one open at a time over in the corner. Like I'd love to be able to open more than one, but unfortunately I can only open them one at a time. But like, you know what? I'll take what I can get, you know. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. The way that this is now, then I've drawn the pose wrong. So that would mean that he would be facing more this way. Especially with the perspective of this. Kind of how that's going. And then these are like different planes that are being separated. Hmm. What art intensive camps do I teach? I teach. Um... Oh my god. <laughs> character design, which is next week, but character design one is full. Um, so character design one, character design two, I teach illustration and figure drawing. Those are the, the ones that I teach. Um, but yes, thank you for mentioning it, Spartan. Um, we are teaching. Um, we do have camps that are coming up. The teen intensives are coming up this coming week. Um, and I am the one who teaches a few of them. Um, so I don't teach any of the kids camps. I teach the teenage camps. Um, so if you kind of miss the format of our, um, winter, spring, fall streams of having a lesson first and then diving into the illustration, then that's what our teen intensive camps are for with me anyway, because <laughs> that's how I structure mine. Um, so if you miss that, feel free to check out the camps that we offer on our website. Seems to be a text emote fight happening in the chat. <laughs> Is there anything between the rice patties? I don't think so. It's just like all greenery. Yeah, the terrace rice patty fields. I think I've made it a little bit too. Tomorrow I'll finally get my digital art tablet. Yay! I made him too big. He's actually supposed to be smaller. Maybe then I can just make him a little chibi then. What brand of tablet are you getting? I might sneak into your figure drawing class. All right, Eerie. <laughs> Put you through the gauntlet. Jesse, do I draw anime? Not really. I'm not much of a, an anime person. I used to be more of one when I was younger. Um, but as I got older, I don't really watch much anime anymore. I'm more of a video game person. But even then, I don't play video games as often anymore either. <laughs> just because I have more stuff to do. On my own. But yeah, like, sometimes I feel like a fraud because it's like, oh, uh, you know. Hey, Jesse, excited to pop in the stream today. Hello, Felicia. Welcome in. Felicia is one of our newest instructors here at the studio. I'm glad to have you here. Glad for you to pop in for a little bit as I try to fix this figure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always feel like a fraud sometimes because it's like, it's like, oh, you teach cartoon and anime. And like, I don't watch much anime. <laughs> I mean, I guess most of the time during our classes anyway, I, we talk about video games, but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I am definitely more of a video game person. Um, as of right now, I've been playing a lot of Ring Fit. I don't know how much that counts as a video game, but like, I mean, I guess it is. It's like a workout video game, but you know. Yes, Felicia is one of our newest instructors. I believe Felicia is going to be teaching some of the, or I believe she already is teaching a lot of the kids camps. So that's what she's going to be doing during the summer.
It's always hard to do umbilical legs because then it's like on like a more human esque figure because it's like what? <laughs> How do these bend? Do you know what I mean? If you'd like to know what umbilical legs are, we talked about it in the mammal stream. I believe those are going to be condensed later on, but we still have the live stream replay. How do you sign up? You got to go to our website. Oh, well, I had a rice bundle before, but now I don't know if I want to do it. I need a bag instead. Maybe I could just have the rice bundles on the back. That makes a little bit of sense. Yep, there are links in the description, and Nightbot will pop up as well with different links as well, I believe, or Jay will link to them directly. In all classes and camps, you can sign up for through our website. Please keep in mind that all classes as well are in Canadian time, um, Eastern Daylight. So please make sure if you are not in Canada or not in Eastern, in the Eastern Daylight time zone, that you convert so you can check if the time works for you. I guess I don't need that second. I don't need this folder then if I'm just working like this. It's all just going to be on the same layer anyway. Can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. I mean, you've been asking me a lot of questions already, and I've always answered, so. <laughs> Ask me. This is so cute. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm a huge sucker for environments. It's definitely up my alley. Yes. Absolutely. I'm more of a character artist, but I do love... I've been growing my love of environments. Do you need money for your class or are they free? There, It will cost money. Um, so the classes do cost money. These YouTube live streams are free. But we do have paid classes as well. Keep up the great content. Thank you. Jesse, how about streaming on Twitch? We thought about it for a bit. I'm not certain if we're ever going to convert. But we've, we've been thinking about it. Um... I think it's mostly... Oh, hello, Gabriel. Um, I think it's mostly just because um, we already have like a YouTube following here. So it's just a little bit easier to work on it through here. I think the sketch for the... I'm going to need another folder. I think the sketch for the... Um... Rice patties is okay, but I want to clean up this guy here. Because this is going to bother me if I don't. But yes, all classes are paid. Um, but these live streams are not. So this is what you get if you don't pay. But if you do pay, then our classes do have, you know, critiques and direct feedback from instructors and stuff like that. I love that it's like, even though this is like a landscape stream, I still had the audacity to include my own characters in here. <laughs> Again, kind of channeling my inner Ghibli for this one. We may have a special one-time segment on Twitch sometime late this month. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. But there you go. For those of you who don't know, I keep saying we because it's not just me. I am not the <laughs> I am not the only person here at Wing Canvas. I am kind of the the person who's always in front of the camera, but um, I am not the only individual here. There are tons of people here at the studio. Jay is one of them. Felicia is another. Gary, who was here earlier, is also in Arunia as well. Keep your eyes on the announcement channel. Let's go. Are you a girl? This is a boy. 
His name is Tim. If you watched our earlier streams, we have a blending stream where I drew him before as well. Um, the reason I'm drawing him is because this is our Japanese rice patties and the kind of creature that I've based him off of is a from Chinese and Japanese mythology. So it kind of fits the theme, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so there's more of us in here, in this studio, than you'd think, you know? It's not just me. I actually don't draw girls very often. 99% <laughs> of the time, it's like, if you ever see me illustrate somebody, they're most likely going to be a boy. So a lot of my a lot of my characters that I draw most often tend to look like fairly cute just because like um especially because like most of the characters from my webcomic are kids. Um so I end up drawing a lot of uh younger individuals more often than not. Do I draw with a mouse or a pen? I use a Cintiq 13 HD, so I do have a pen tablet or a screen tablet. Um, so it is a Wacom Cintiq, uh, so that means that it has a screen as well. So I draw directly onto a screen. Um, I didn't start with this. Um, I've told the story before of how my very first pen tablet, um, was older than me on a, and I used it on a beat up laptop that couldn't charge anymore. Um, <laughs> I had no pen pressure, no screen, right? My second tablet did have a screen. It was a Wacom Intuos, um, and that one... Uh, did have pen pressure, still had to use it on a beat-up laptop, but... And then finally I got my Cintiq when I was in, like, 11th grade or something. So, don't always have to start with something great. I actually recommend you don't start with a screen tablet. Start with something that doesn't have a screen, so you can get used to it. I can't believe it's 4.37. We've already passed most of the hard bits. Same here, I mostly draw guys the majority of the time. Me too, M. Basil. Me too. I think I used to draw a lot of girls. I did when I was younger. And then at one point I was like, oh shoot, I don't know how to draw dudes. So then I focused on dudes for a really long time. And then after over a while, I was like, oh shoot, I don't know how to draw girls anymore. <laughs> and I can draw both. It's just now it's just my preference is drawing guys. You know what I'm saying? I only know how to draw women. A lot of people only know how to draw women. I think a lot of people find drawing women more interesting. Um, for me, I'm very much like, I, I like to draw, um, I don't know, very muscular bodies as well. Obviously women can be muscular too. And those tend to be the types of women I draw most of the time. Very athletic body types. Um, but I don't know. I think a lot of people like the, the curves of, a, of female anatomy more in comparison, but I think because I'm the type of person who doesn't really care about that, like in terms of like, oh, female bodies are softer and male bodies are more angular. It's like, I don't listen to any of that. So, because, you know, everybody has different body types, right? So because I kind of break those rules more often, I I end up just liking drawing boys more. I guess because male characters just tend to be my favorites anyway. <laughs> okay. I think that's good. We kind of got that down. Cool, 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 cool. So that means we can get to the line work. Let's go. Oops, that's the wrong letter. That's my letter. So now we can get to the lining portion. How fast that was. <laughs> Four, one, thirty-eight. Twenty-three, thirty-nine. Uh, so that's eleven thirty-nine for you. Ah. Let's try a new command. Ooh, does it work? To plug my socials. <laughs> um. Oh, yes, it does. Let's go. <laughs> How many streams do we do every week? We have one. So every week it, there is one stream at 4 p.m. EDT. Same place, same time. We are always here. 
By the way, cool Kirby. Thank you. My cursor. <laughs> my Kirby cursor. <laughs> my obsession with Kirby. I have a Kirby plushie in my lap right now. You don't understand. My love of Kirby is so intense. Oh, yes. If anyone's interested in reading my, uh, my webcomic, Jay has so kindly plugged it. I got you, Jesse. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> the fun thing about this, because now this is like a whole stream of mostly just the illustration portion. Now I can really focus on the lines. I can really focus on making it look a lot cleaner and giving it the look that I really want. So now I can take my time a little bit more. I may like to be a bit of a speed demon when it comes to your art, but um, <laughs> sometimes I like to take it slow, especially for background work. Your art is really cool. Thank you. Like, I draw a lot of backgrounds for my webcomic, right? And I end up spending a lot of time on, the, time on those. One page, depending on its complexity, can take me anywhere between, like, 8 hours to 12 hours, something like that. It takes a really, really long time to draw that stuff. I can understand. Kirby's so cool and cute. Yes. I have been playing Kirby games since like 2008 or 2009. So it's been like... I've played almost every Kirby game past Superstar Ultra. So whenever Superstar Ultra came out, almost everything past that I have played. Like main games. Not necessarily the spinoffs. Though I do still kind of want to play some spinoffs. And then I've played a few before that as well. So I've played Kirby and the Crystal Shards. I've played the original Kirby. I've played um, Kirby's Dreamline 3, I think I've played as well. I'm trying to think which ones I've played before the release of Superstar Ultra. But I've played a lot of Kirby. <laughs> I have Kirby everywhere in this room. I have like, it's not funny <laughs> how much Kirby I have. Yeah, I think it was Yuri who said once where she subbed one of my classes and like when we were back in the live studio and my student and like you can see all like the Kirby demos that I did and Yuri said something along the lines of like, wow, Jesse really likes Kirby, doesn't she? And one of my students were like saying that Jesse likes Kirby is a severe understatement. <laughs> and devours everything he is. Hungry boy. Yeah, not only do I play the games, but it's like I, I watched the entire anime, I think twice, and I still have a lot of the episodes memorized. You know, been a long time, but, you know, <laughs> just a constant like, yep, I still remember that episode. <laughs> Show me a screenshot and I'll know. Even a Kirby emote on Discord. Dude, I have a whole slew of Kirby emotes. All right. Like the one that I use the most is just my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, Yuri remembers. She knows. <laughs> so my lines right now are very, very thin. Um, because the actual background itself, right? It's a it's a background, right? And the actual rice patties around are not my focal point. These characters are, right? So my lines are going to be very, very thin and they're going to be very broken up and not as sharp, right? Because that's not what I want viewers' eyes to focus on. I want them to go here, right? So I'm using a few methods to get people's eyes to go here first, right? First of all, this character is going to be the most detailed thing in the scene, right? This is going to have an outfit. He has carrying something. He has a long tail, right? Um, he's got a horns, right? So, and this little chicken guy down here as well. They all have like, that's the most detailed thing in the scene, right? That's one thing. Second is that I'm using the rule of thirds, right? They fall directly onto one of the points for rule of thirds, right? And if you want to know what the rule of thirds are, right? It's part of composition. It's where um, if you make like a kind of a three by three grid on a piece, these little points that you create are where you want your main focal point to be, right? So that's kind of your rule of thirds thing. So I'm using a lot of contrast. I'm using a lot of rule of thirds and compositional things to make sure that your eyes go to a single point, right? Which is really, really important when it comes to illustrative backgrounds, right? So keep those in mind. Keep Always keep that in mind when you do stuff. You play Kirby on the DS or 
other some other Nintendo console when I was like five years old. Then I got a Wii. It just played really nice Kirby game. It is that giant sword, you know? That's Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. I love Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Is that one with, is that one with like Magalore and all of them? That was a good one. Uh, my favorite on the Wii is still Kirby's Epic Yarn. I loved it so much that I bought the boot, the reboot for the uh, or the port for the 3DS. <laughs> so I played, I finished Kirby's Epic Yarn maybe twice on the Wii. And then I finished it once on the 3DS. Just for nostalgia purposes. It was like 30 bucks. And I was like, yeah, why not? I'll just buy it. Um, emphasis. Yeah, emphasis. Who watches gacha YouTubers? I have never watched a gacha YouTuber in my life. I know a lot about them. I, I know of, like, of them just because of my students who do watch gacha YouTubers or make gotcha animations or whatever, but I don't know anything about gotcha YouTubers. It's kind of like uh, my friends who like VTubers. I'm like, I don't know anything about VTubers. I just know that they exist. They're innocuous to me and they haven't done anything, so I'm completely okay with their existence. <laughs> but yeah, lots of things to think about when you draw kinds of backgrounds, you know? There's like I know it's boring to kind of th have to constantly think about like compositional stuff and whatever, but it it's good to keep in mind, you know? <laughs> Sorry, Jesse, but Kirby easily gets rolled by Mario. Oh, you're basic, dude. I'm joking. That's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, I don't know, man. I've always been a Kirby person. As much as like Mario games are also very beautiful. I was very into um, more Mario games when I was younger, um, like pre Kirby. I was really into Yoshi's Island. Um, I think I played um, New Super Mario for the Wii a lot. I could never finish it because I was just really bad at games. I still am, but I was worse so back then, you know. <laughs> In Nintendo Smash Bros, Kirby is very OP. Kirby, a lot of people hate Kirby in Smash because they're like, oh my god, Kirby's like the, the beginner. To play. Listen, man. I'll play as Kirby as much as I want, all right? I don't care how many times you D-tier him, okay? I play all the... Whenever I play Smash, I play all, like, the small, kind of hard-hitting characters. I like speed, right? So, But I don't like too much speed, right? Fox and all the Star Fox characters, too fast for me, right? But, you know, like, Kirby, Lucas, Ness, Villager, Toon Link, all them are, like, perfect speed for what I like to play as, you know? And they, like, hit hard enough. I really like... um villagers uh f tilt that one's a fun one that game one of my favorite kirby games when i got the switch still played kirby Just today i installed um the nes game kirby games for the pc oh so you downloaded some uh oh actually i won't say that out loud because uh you got some legal versions of old kirby games i understand jesse who's my favorite animator i don't know any by name I know studios that I really, really like, but I don't know any by name. Um, one of my favorite animation studios is Studio Leica. They do um, stop motion. Like, so they, they've done a lot of movies. Um, so I really liked, oh, what's it called? Kubo and the Two Strings, which is like my absolute favorite American movie of all time. Um, loved Kubo and the Two Strings, loved Coraline. Um... I still have yet to watch more by Leica. Like, I, I've watched quite a few, but, like, not all of them. And, like, Ghibli, obviously, is, like, my favorite animation studio of all time. Like, Leica's really, really up there, but Ghibli obviously trumps it. Um, like, I have watched so many Ghibli movies. Like, it's not even funny <laughs> how many I've watched, right? I've watched, and, like, out of the ones that I've watched, I think I've only, I think only two of them I haven't watched more than once, right? I think that's Kiki's Delivery Service and Totoro. Oh, and Grave of the Fireflies. Those are the three I haven't watched more than once. But I've watched Spirited Away the most. I think I've watched that like eight times, eight or nine times. I've watched Howl's, Howl's Moving Castle a good five times. I've watched um, Princess Mononoke maybe three or four times. Um, I've watched Porco Rosso twice. I've watched um, Re The Cat Returns twice. Uh, I've watched Ponyo maybe three times. I've watched The Secret World of Arietti twice. I love Ghibli. <laughs> like, it's some of my favorite things ever. What about Sonic? Sonic is so fast, dude. I could not play a Sonic in Smash. He wasn't, like, he jumps really high. I liked high jump as well. What's so wrong about Kirby and Smash? He's cute and cool, but you'd be wrong with him. Um, it's like, because a lot of Smash competitive people like to rank 
different characters. Kirby is kind of on a low tier compared to others, but I don't care. <laughs> Forgot Kirby rolled Doom Slayer rip. That's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. I don't know what you're apologizing for, but cool. And thank you. The boy is really cute. Yeah. A lot of my characters end up being really, really cute. Um, also, another thing that you want to think about sometimes when you're lining, right? Sometimes you'll be lining for a while. And then, like, you know, you, you'll stop. And you'll go, like, oh, my God, this line art is, like, it looks awful compared to the sketch. This is why you turn off your sketch every once in a while. Just to check for your mistakes, right? If you don't do that, then you're going to, like, end up getting kind of stuck in some spot. And then you'll turn it off. And you're, like, oh, wow, this looks not excellent, right? And that's your own fault, right? <laughs> Make sure that your sketch, that your line work looks good. Right? If there's a section that doesn't look great, then fix it. Left from India, made my very first digital art today, learning from your videos. Satisfying day. Yay! I'm glad. I'm glad we could help. Digital is lots of fun. I will always recommend digital till the end of time. You know? <laughs> I don't care about the tier list either. Makes me feel good when I win with Isabel. My dad loves playing with Isabel. He loves playing with the, the with the Animal Crossing characters, to be honest. Um, he likes Villager as well, though. He mains Bayonetta, I think, is who he plays most of the time. Bayo and Daisy, he likes playing. Um, he plays Zero Suit as well sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not much of a competitive player ever. Like, 99% of the time, I just kind of play just because it's, like... Nowadays, I play Smash only when friends are playing, too, because then it's, like, kind of, like, a party game nowadays. <laughs> Tag team with Doom Slayer. I have not played Smash in so long, to be honest. I patiently await for a new Kirby game. I think that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> Once we get to the character, you'll notice that my lining style may change a little bit, right? I'll start to zoom in a little bit more and I'll start to focus on some areas a little bit more, right? And that's going to be because, right, he's going to be a character of very high detail and polish compared to the rest. I like to call it casual competitive. That's fair enough. You're a talented person, Jess. Thank you. I try. <laughs> I do my best. That's all I can ever ask from my students and from everyone else. And it's all I can ask from me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not closing up a lot of my lines. For these rice patties and part of me is like that's gonna hurt me when i actually do the coloring but that's future jesse's problem and uh i'm not gonna worry about it <laughs> oh yeah it's 4:53, and we're close to getting to the coloring portion that's good making good time Let's fix some of these because I want to make them look a little bit more like stairs in some areas. So this should be a little bit more closed off here. Dark in this area as well. So it kind of gives off the feeling of layering, you know? It kind of gives it a tiered sort of feel. I've never played Smash Bros. Man, they should add Thanos. I'm back. Welcome back. And Nintendo has to... Well, I mean, Thanos is part of uh, Disney uh, because of Marvel. Um, yeah, I don't know how if Disney would ever collaborate with Nintendo. <laughs> I mean, who knows? They got Bayo into Smash, so we'll see what the future... They got Sans into Smash, so I guess we'll see what happens on that front. Anything is possible. Though I think this is the final Smash game. I think Sakurai said that. He doesn't want to make another one. Honestly, valid. 
to be fair. <laughs> the stress of making Smash games for years, I would not want to make another one either. Do you have any advice for staying motivated to draw? I always try to get different inspiration points. Right? Different points of inspiration. Different... Um, be inspired by different things. Right? I never want to stay stagnant in what I get inspired by. Also making sure that I take proper breaks. Because, you know, sometimes it's like, they have sands. Yeah, it's like a skin. Um, hey, what I miss? Not too much. We just got into the lining portion. We didn't really do a lesson this time around. Yeah, but as a suit for the means, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, you got to change up what you're inspired by. Play different games, read new books, watch different anime, you know, whatever. Right? You got to absorb content in order to make content as well, right? Artists inspire each other. And if you aren't getting that inspiration, right, you're going to get demotivated real fast, you know? So you got to make sure that you're also motivating yourself in different and new ways. Right. I always like to listen to music. Some people like to watch anime. Some people like to play video games. I like to listen to music. I like to read comics. I like to... Josie, have you watched Loki yet? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I want to, but man. How I hate to color through my specific painting style, which I make difficult for myself because that's where I draw the best. I understand, you know, like, coloring is, uh, everybody kind of does it differently. We'll get to how I color soon. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't watched Loki yet. I've been told to a lot, and I've been, I've seen that it looks really good, and I'm like, man. I think y'all keep that in mind, of course. I've been watching Sweet Tooth with my dad. It's on Netflix. Sweet Tooth is really good. <laughs> it's, like, sad, but, like, a good kind of sad, I guess, is how I would describe it. So far. I'm not very far in who is Loki? Loki is part of... Well, technically he's a Norse god. Um, but he is also a Marvel character. He's kind of like an anti-hero villain kind of character. Oh, I just saw the pun. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> yeah, because Loki... Everybody always said that Loki was the best Marvel character. I honestly, like, I like Marvel movies, but, like, I wasn't, like, super, super into them. Like, right, you know, like, they're just kind of, like, they're movies. <laughs> kind of the same formula most of the time, right? Every single time that somebody talks about Loki, I'm like, I only care about one Loki, and that's from God of War. <laughs> and it's like, but that's kind of a spoiler, but it's okay. It's an old, it's at this point, it's like a four, three-year-old game. So, no, it's four years now. 2021, 2018, 2019, 2020, Yeah, it's like four, four years now. We're getting close to four years, like maybe. It's like a four-year-old game. Why a violation? It's a, it's a joke, dude. <laughs> it's just like, no puns in this house. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going to blame you for it. My best friend loves puns. Oh, let's, you know what? Let's make a folder separate for characters. So in that way, it's just a little bit easier to distinguish the two from each other. I remember Atreus was Loki. Exactly. It's the only Loki I care about. <laughs> I was, like, upset because God of War 5 got delayed. 
so like out of uh what's it called four years already right isn't it wild oh yeah felicia and i had a sad conversation about how god of war 5 was <laughs> delayed um but yeah no because it won game of the year back in 2018 so it's like 2018 2019 2020 2021 it's gotta be four years by now so sad um but yeah, I, I got so upset because I was like, oh, he's got a war five, got the lead. So then, like, uh, just because, like, out of impulse, I, like, designed a charm and sent it off to a manufacturer so I could, like, have a charm that hangs off of my phone. So now I have a tray that's hanging off of my phone. Nope. Now my headphones are dying. Time to plug them in. I can see them blinking in the corner of my eye. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll plug you in. Can you please? <laughs> Guilty as charged. You can't. There's there's too much evidence against you, Gio. You? Plug in, please. There's so many things hanging off of my headphones right now. Like I'm gonna have like the charger, and I want some tacos. That's valid. Uh, I'm trying to plug it in without looking, and it's not working this time. Fine. Hang on. Ugh. There we go. Epic. Hello, welcome in. It's like I have the mic hanging off of my headphones, the mic cord, and then I have the, the charging cord now. I should have charged my headphones before. It's okay. Whatever. Oh, we're at the top of the hour. That's okay. We'll finish lining this and then I'll do my little read. Luckily, I'm here. The fish taco of salads. <laughs> Been summoned. I was debating on getting either Taco Bell or New York fries yesterday because I had to drive to go and get my, so I had to go for like my brother's second vaccine. So I had to drive him to the, to the vaccination site and like we, we decided to just go out for lunch and I was like, oh, do I want New York fries or Taco Bell? I ended up getting New York fries just because they have like a, a veggie option it made me feel less guilty about getting New York fries. <laughs> Perfect. Tacos in the chat. Tacos in the chat. <laughs> so I'm going a little bit slower when it comes to this character art, and I probably shouldn't be. I should probably speed it up a little bit, but... You notice now I'm really starting to, my lines are more closed in and I'm starting to kind of make them a little more precise, right? And that's just because, um, you know, this character is going to be the focal point. So it's what people are going to see first. So whatever you, so especially when it comes to like character faces or anything like facial features or anything like that, you have to be extra careful because 99% of the time it is what people's eyes are going to go to first, right? With Within comics, it's what people's eyes are going to go to second. Right, the first thing that their eyes are going to go to are the words, and then it's going to be the characters. But when it comes to illustrations, and you have characters in there, the character's face is what they're going to see first. Right, so you have to be really, really careful when it comes to lining them and illustrating them because, you know, you want them to look good because it's like a first. It's almost like a first impression, you know. Let's turn this off for a second. It's almost like a first impression, you know. Oof! Now I'm craving. She get Taco Bell after this. She get. <laughs> I sentence thy to fry dungeon. That sounds terrifying. Honestly, imagine getting fried in a dungeon. <laughs> not gonna lie, not an epic way to go out. <laughs> 
And I don't think I can say that sentence out loud, but I understand. Maybe I should rethink my choices, perhaps. Studio field trip to Taco Bell. I'm down. Me too. Yeah, even with backgrounds, like, if there wasn't a character here, I would have had to add something that was a focal point. Right? With Japanese rice patties, there aren't any, you know, lampposts, or there aren't anything that would really contrast with colors. So a character was, like, the easiest choice I guess right you know I could have added like an animal or I could have added like a lone piece of something right because most of the time even when you're doing background work right you still want to have something that kind of sticks out right whether it's with color or with it's with characters or with it's it's with you know lighting or something right with your illustration pieces you always want something to draw the user's eyes first and then you have to think about where their eyes are going to go next right that's called your rhythm I believe Oh, no, that's your movement. We talked about movement. <laughs> that's right. Um, that's your movement, principle of design. And your movement is really important for getting your viewer's eyes to move across a, an art piece, right? So you really have to think about how you're going to place your elements so that the, the person who looks at your artwork will look at it in the direction you want it to, right? That get, becomes very, very important for comic artists as well right really really important because it's like you know you want your the people who are reading to read your speech bubbles in a certain direction right or a certain order and if you get that order wrong like if you illustrate them so then the order is wrong then you kind of just messed up the whole comic you know <laughs> so that's why especially for comics it's always good to get outside sources to read it and like and then you can tell them like what order do you think these bubbles are going in, you know? I'm new to drawing. I wanted to estimate how long does it take to develop good line art? My friend, <laughs> I have been doing line art since uh, I was pre-10 years old. So it takes a lot of practice, you know, a lot of... It's not going to take two days. I think this is something that Faye told me, uh, it was like, like an estimated how long it takes to become a master at something. It's like over 10,000 hours or something. Some dude said that. I don't remember exactly what the quote was, but it was something along the lines of that. Anyway, long, long time. Oh, Tom Nook. Yeah. Tom Nook is, uh, Tanuki. He's from Animal Crossing. More casual players hate him because he always takes your bells. As a um, seasoned, very intense Animal Crossing player, he didn't really bother me because I grinded on my bells all the time. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that was me with my obsession. But yes, lots and lots of practice. It, art in general takes lots and lots of practice. And make sure that you're not just drawing, you know, the same thing over and over and over, right? You got to make sure that you're practicing properly, right? Challenge yourself. Give yourself new things to draw, right? Give yourself new techniques. Try to learn from others, right? See how others are doing stuff. Maybe watch a tutorial. Maybe you're a tutorial type of person. I personally, I am actually not a tutorial type of person, right? I, I tend to just kind of learn on my own. But... If you are a tutorial person, you know, watch some tutorials, see how other people do stuff, right? It's important in that regard. Oh man, I'll be so good in 60 years. I thought I was at least a bit good at this. You'll be good. You'll be fine. You know, that's kind of like an estimate thing, right? But, you know, just as long as you practice enough, right? Everybody has different goals, especially when it comes to art, right? What you want your artwork to look like, what you want 
your end goal to be, right? And even when you reach that quote unquote end goal, you'll find that you'll still want more, right? Art is a never ending journey. Like if I saw how my art looks now compared to like when I, if like, if I saw my art now when I was like 10, I would have been like, dude, why, why would I ever continue, right? It's like, I'm done, right? I'm, I'm clearly it, right? But I look at my art now at my current age and I'm like, dude, I can do so much better. Like <laughs> It's like, you know, art is a never ending journey. You never stop learning, right? You just continue over time. Oh, all right. See ya, Adam. Thanks for joining. Yeah, Adam is here every week, so don't worry. <laughs> You'll see him again. Um, Adam or Ghost, he's here every week. But yeah, if you never want to lose contact with any of the people that you meet in chat, join the Discord. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We, we're a little bit past top of the hour, so I have missed my uh, my point, but that's okay. We're almost done with the line work, and then I can get onto the coloring. Hopefully this one isn't too over time. I don't think it will be, but we'll see. <laughs> I did certainly take my time on this one. One thing I like that Faye always says is you never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. Yes, that's also very true, right? Instead of comparing your work to other people's work, right? Compare your own work to yourself, right? Compare your past artwork to where you are now, right? Look at your past artwork. Look at how much you've changed. Look at how much you've grown, right? You as an artist will develop, right? Sometimes within months, sometimes within days, right? I know that when I was younger, like a high schooler, my art style would change within like two months, all right, or like my art would hone within two months. And that would be with me like constantly drawing every single day and constantly trying to get better and learning new things. Constantly picking up new techniques and learning new things and getting better at what I, I knew I was already kind of good at, right? Finding my niche, learning how to do certain things, you know? It is all about practice and a lot of resilience and a lot of, you know, stuff like that. I joined the Discord, but I'm too lazy to introduce myself. You should, you should speak with us all. Oh man, it doesn't work. It's okay. You've uh, you've summoned fish taco salad anyway. Oh, you know that horrible feeling when like you need to sneeze and then like your body just kind of tells you like no and then you don't. Yeah. I just felt that. Now I feel all weird. <laughs> okay. Cool. And those are the lines. All right. So before we keep going, let's do my little read. So if you are new to this channel if you didn't know we are not only an uh you know we're not only just a youtube channel and it's not only just me we are an whole art studio with classes so if you'd like to check out the classes that we have to offer be sure to check out the website in the link in the description or it when when nightbot pops up um, um so be sure to check those classes and our camps that we have offered there um and this file that is up here along with the kind of mini lesson thing i suppose will both be up as jpegs on our discord so be sure to check out the socials that we have um linked in the description or when nightbot pops up 
Um, so be sure to check out all of those that we have to offer. But you'll notice, especially with this illustration, I got a ton of layers for this one. So if you'd like to see my working files with layers, you're going to have to join our Patreon. And that's where you can check out all of the working files. And you can check out all of, um, well, not all of them, but you'll get a few of them. I think you get one per week for some tiers, but you'll get two or one per month on some tiers and two per month on other tiers. Right? So be sure to check those out um, with our Patreon. Um, and we also have some limited spots that, you know, won't be there forever. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right. Let's go back to this. Sorry, everybody, I have to go by. That's all good. Thanks for joining. Oh, goodness. My pen stopped working for a moment. Okay. I'm going to do the quick. Ooh. Oh, it's referencing the canvas. Let's reference the layer then. There we go. Let's do my quick selection trick for the character real quick. There we go. So then I can just flat color him in real quick. So then he's kind of just out of the way. And then we can focus on the background. Let's go. Okay. Let's do the flats real quick. Because in this case, all of these lines are broken up. So I cannot do my inverse selection trick, unfortunately. Yeah, I did say that future Jesse would hate me for that. And future Jesse does hate past Jesse for that. But that's okay. <laughs> I'll live with it. Uh, let's turn off my correction real quick. Okie dokie. Yeah, so now we're getting into the coloring bits. I'm going to start with the flat colors. Um, I'm also going to have to end up doing a lot of water reflections because of all the water that's in the rice patties. So I need to do those as well. I think I'm going to change the color of this road. Just make it a little more gray. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Kind of messy coloring it right now because the cleanish coloring bits I don't care about quite so much yet. I'll clean it up once we get there, but right now I just kind of want to get the blocked in colors in first. So now I can kind of have an understanding of what this all looks like. Okay, I introduced myself. Yay! Good, good, good. How do you paint bucket? Because when I try everything except inside the box, it's colored. Um, what do you mean? Like when you use the paint bucket tool and you try to color inside something? First of all, you need to make sure that your lines are closed. Second of all, you need to make sure that your paint bucket is referencing the canvas, not the layer, if you're not going to be using the inverse wand trick. Um, but sometimes the magic, like the, the paint bucket can get kind of finicky regardless. Whether it has to do with your tolerance, or if you haven't turned on the expand, or anything like that. Paint bucket overall can get kind of finicky. So I don't always use it. I mostly just use it if I need to quickly color in a flat. It already looks so good. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, your paint bucket is like... Yeah, you need to... Like for what I did with the characters is you, I used an inverse magic wand trick. So I didn't only use the paint bucket. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's not a perfect tool. Sometimes you just got to manually do it. Like what I'm doing with the rest of the rice patties. I'm probably going to magic wand some of them just so I can figure out what's happening. But other than that though, yeah, I might just manually do it. <laughs> Yeah, and then because it's reflecting the sky. Oh, you know what I'll do before I do any of the... Um... Before I do any of the reflections, I'll do some of this magic because I don't have to worry about the water. Because right, I don't want it to be all just like one green, right? I want to kind of give it some 
life. Give it some variety. I'm gonna have to darken the edges of these two. I should have. Let's turn up my tolerance a little bit and then let's. Oops, maybe not that high. <laughs> And then we can do that. Yeah, so I can give this grassy bit a little bit more variety. Because right, if I keep it all one color, then it's going to end up looking a little bit flat. Right? And I want to make sure that everything feels a little bit more like you know, things. I use a shape tool, draw a rectangle, but the paint bucket does not color inside the box. Shape tool, draw a rectangle, but the paint bucket does not color inside the box. Like, if you use the shape tool, shape brush tool, you draw a box. Like that. You gotta use the paint bucket. Um, if it's on the same layer, you have to make sure it's referencing the layer. If it's on a different layer, then you have to make sure that it's referencing the canvas. Right? So like up at the top, you have your reference either to layer or canvas. So if it's on the same layer, then you can have it referencing the layer. If you set it to canvas, you have to set it to... Or if it's like on a different layer, then you have to set it to canvas. Um, oops. Or if it's, um, you know, going outside of the box, then you're going to have to... Um, if it's selected, like a selection kind of thing, then you're going to have to hit control shift I and that will inverse your selection. But if it's the shape, then it may just be because um, you have it set to the wrong layer kind of thing. Variety, variety. I love me some variety. Haha, <laughs> one of the principles of design. I remember when I was in high school, my least favorite lessons were always, like, principles of design and, like, elements of art. Just because I'd heard them so many times, I was like, ugh, so boring, I have to listen to these over and over again. Honestly, though, they're good to kind of have drilled into your brain. Even if it does get kind of boring to have to listen to them over and over and over, it's good to have them kind of drilled in there. So yeah, I'm just giving it a little bit of extra color because I don't want them to all be just one shade of tone, one tone of green. Okay, so it gives it a little bit of extra depth as well. How to change your name on Discord? Well, that's a that's a Discord question, but you can probably just Google that. It was good stuff to drill, that's fair. For what is that light green for again? So the light green, it kind of tells you where the top of the rice patty is. And then the dark green is going to be for, to kind of tell you where the stair portion is, I suppose. Right? It gives it a little bit of extra depth. Makes it feel a little bit more... Three-dimensional, I suppose without focusing too hard on it. I'm kind of giving it a slightly more painted look, um, even though it has line art. <laughs> but it kind of gives it a bit more variety. I'm using a textured brush because if I use a perfectly smooth brush, then it wouldn't look quite as nice, I don't think. Even now it's still a little bit scuffed, but like I don't want to zoom in because if I do, then I'll focus way too hard on it, you know? Better to leave it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now I live and breathe design. That's fair. I live and breathe comic art now, so I understand completely. That's a lie. I live and breathe Kirby. That's my <laughs> That's what my artistic legacy has led to. Now that I've kind of got that down. Yeah, because it gives a little bit of extra something.
Sorry. Whenever I go kind of quiet, it means I'm like focusing a little bit or I'm like thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. And then the sky portion, I'm assuming that I'm going to use something a little more like this, right? And then I can switch back to the pen brush. So now... I just have to be really careful here. <laughs> my eyes are so close to my screen right now. I should not have them this close, but I am like zoned in. Let's actually just get rid of that. My fingers are broken. Me too. Okay. What time is it? Oh, 526. We're making good time. Um, hopefully I don't go too over time. I keep saying that, but I mean it. <laughs> Especially with last week's, how I, how I went very, very over time. That was my own fault for not testing the program beforehand. Yeah, so when I fill in this blue portion, hopefully, right, I'll be able to kind of retain that somewhat shaded look of the, the rice terraces or the rice patties. I can't wait for tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I can't fill that in. I'm going to have to just live with just coloring it in manually. Man, I am not used to coloring in manually digitally anymore. <laughs> so used to just having all my lines completely closed up that I can just leave it, you know. Plan your layers strategically, right? I am keeping all of my stuff on one layer because I am lazy, right? But a lot of the times artists will plan their layers so then like we can like, you know, if something's going to be above something or below something else, you know, keep those in mind for how you want to structure your layers and where you want them to go. Oh, that's right. You're getting your Wacom. Oh, you're getting a Wacom. Which one? What do you prefer, Jesse? Fish, cats, dogs, burbs, or froggo? Make the right choice, no pressure. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I am a very big bird person. I really I have a bird, so I guess that makes me kind of biased to that. I love birds, I love snakes. Um and you know, the age old question, cats or dogs, I do prefer cats. Um, like I love both, but like in terms of if I had to choose whether I was gonna get a cat or a dog, I'd get a cat just because it would match my personality a little bit better. Um but yeah, I think I think I, out of that list, I'd have to go with birds. I like how you didn't I, I like add reptiles in. <laughs> reptiles are not uh, part of that list. Um, but yeah, I'm a very big bird and snake person. I do have a fish as well. I have a betta. His name is Halcyon. Um, and he always comes to the front of the tank whenever I go to feed him. <laughs> He likes to scream at me, even though I can't hear his, his fins flap out. And I'm like, I am here to feed you. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, Wacom Intuos. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I got the Intuos Pro 4, so I have an older model. But I think my brother has a newer Intuos. Good choices, good choices. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 
I do love my animals. If like if this whole art thing didn't work out, my backup was to be like a marine biologist or some kind of biologist um, for a while. And then I stopped taking science. So then my backup became psychology. Um, but it turns out the art thing did work. So I don't have to <laughs> go back to that. I suppose. I'm a big fan of fish. Yes. Jay is a very big fan of fish with your whole fish head, fish head friends series. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> wait for mine as well. For series two. I got the elephant. <laughs> I love elephants. Actually, I have quite a few of uh, Jay's pins. I have the cat, I have the dragon, and I have the rooster. Feel free to plug yourself, Jay. <laughs> that art thing. Yeah. Yeah, I love fish. I like. I know that like people are like, oh, fish are such boring pets. I don't care, okay? Fish are so cool. <laughs> I could stare at a fish all day. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not. Li I'm not gonna lie. Like I love going to aquariums and I love just staring at fish. My favorite kind of ocean dwelling thing is like the leafy sea dragon. And every single time that there's an exhibit of one in like a, I have yours ready. Thank you. <laughs> like whenever there's like an exhibit of a leafy sea dragon, I remember there was one in Quebec. And I just kind of sat there and stared at it for a good like twenty to thirty minutes, and my parents were like, "Jess, we need to we need to go." And I was like, "But I want to stare at the fish more." <laughs> I love staring at fish. I really do. It's like I'm like I guess in that regard, I am very much like a cat. It's just like I could stare at a fish all day, and I'd be okay. You know what I'm saying? Someone who understands. Yeah. What? Yeah, so Fate, uh, sorry, not Fate. Uh, Jay is a uh, an animal pin artist as well. Hello, fancy dinosaur. Welcome in. Um, Jay is also a pin artist, so he does design his own like enamel pins off to the side as like a personal kind of thing. And I have like three of them. <laughs> three or four of them. I think I have four. I might have four. I'm trying to think. Or I guess I will have four. Fish are also just really fun to draw in general. That's also true. I like drawing long fish. Like any fish that's like really long. I guess because like I'm just a big fan of like eels and snakes and all that fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> okay. Let me reinforce this a little bit more because I feel like it needs a little bit of it. And some areas are not as smooth as I would like them to be, but that's okay. I will fix them afterwards, I suppose. Oops. I'll fix these afterwards, I say, as I continue to fix them. <laughs> I'll fix it afterwards. <laughs> oh, man, what are you... Oh, man, what are you doing? It looks so easy, but I know that I couldn't make that in three years. Trust me, man. It took me more than three years to make it look easy, right? It takes a long, long time to practice this kind of stuff, right? It's not, you're not going to learn it over when I, right? It takes a long, long time to reach any point with an art. Yes, the long boys. I love, I love the snakes. Yeah, last week we did the reptile stream. I drew a white-lipped python-inspired girl. Um... Yeah, we talked about the different skeletons. We talked about all the anatomy stuff when it comes to reptiles and things like that. <laughs> but yeah, you'd be surprised at how much you can improve in three years. I look back at my art from three years ago and I'm like, bro, <laughs> what happened? It's super, super different the way that I drew back then versus now. Um, especially my digital work, right? I never even used to use subsurface scattering until like about a year or two ago. You can hate me. I don't care about fish. Bring me so much sushi as possible. Listen, I love sushi as well. I'm a very big fish person in terms of like the, the like beauty of them, but I also think that they're delicious. Uh, it goes the same thing with chickens and cows and pigs, right? I think that they are beautiful creatures and they should be treated right. 
right? The same way as all animals. But I also love sushi. And I eat poke bowl every week. <laughs> that's, that's not an exaggeration either. <laughs> the poke bowl people hate me. Well, I don't think they hate me, but they definitely re- they recognize me now. Every single time they walk in, I'm like the usual. I'm like, yeah. It's just they know me there now. <laughs> it's fantastic how often I get poke bowl. Once one of the employees was like, you get this every week. Are you not sick of it yet? And I was like, no. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so she is the bonus. Bonus as to why I love fish. So true. So true. Pigs are cool. Pigs are cool. Pig skulls are really great. I have a pig skull. And they're really hard to draw without a reference. <laughs> so I always have a reference of the pig skull ready. That's fine. It's a fish eat fish world we live in. That's valid. That is valid. Cows are decent. I like cows. I think cows are cute. I'm a very big fan of the cow aesthetic. The cow print aesthetic. Oops. I clicked something on me keyboard by accident. We're good. Man, this part is taking long. <laughs> it's always these portions where it's like, it takes a long time. It's not hard. It's just like, these are like my least favorite portions of like the art process, right? It's like the portions that aren't hard, they just take a really long time. And I have to sit here and be patient. I'm not a very patient person when it comes to art. I like to move very, very fast. So it's like whenever I have to do something like this, I'm like, uh, when is it over? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We live in a society. Yeah, we do. Can you believe that we live in a society is a canon thing that Joker has said now? I think that's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Jesse, this is turning out. Thank you. Jesse, do you know the anime Bleach? Yes, I do. I used to have a... Or I had some friends who were really obsessed with Bleach. Um, I never cared for it. I thought it was like... I never watched it, but I know what it is, you know? Um, I think that's the same with a lot of animes. It's like, I know that they exist, but then I just never bothered to give them a try. <laughs> I think in place of Bleach, I watched a lot of fairy tale as a kid. Um, I look back on it now, I'm like, man, I watched 104 episodes of that show and like, I, I, it wasn't even, I wasn't even done, but I just stopped because there were just so many and I didn't care enough to finish them. <laughs> know what you're saying? Yeah think like one anime that i really really liked as a kid um that i for some reason i dropped for no reason was full metal alchemist and then like i just never picked it back up and i don't know why and then i got older and i was like oh i need a manga to read and i was like i might as well just read full metal and i finished it in two days and it's like my favorite manga ever (laughs) it's so good full metal is so so good um but yeah i'm more of a manga reader than i am an anime watcher long way for the anime bleach yeah no i i don't know i was like i wasn't very interested in it it looked okay it looked all right but you know i know it existed but i was just very like you know I, again i feel like a fraud all the time because i'm always like it's like yeah i teach cartooning and anime but i don't really watch that much anime you know i'm much more of a manga person but the anime i watch are like you know very few and far in between the most recent one that i watched was hunter hunter and that was really, really good. I had a really bad obsession with that for a while as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was really, really into anime when I was a kid, more so. Like when I was like a kind of like an early teenager. Um, I still watched some when I was in high school, but not as avidly. But yeah, I'm more of a video game person. Like if you, like I am more of a video game person, hands down. Um, so I know more video games than I do anime. I have more experience with different video games. One manga author that I love with my whole heart, obviously, is like Junji Ito. I cannot get enough of Junji Ito's works. Um, I saw him draw live. I think I've mentioned that on stream before, but he came to Canada a while ago. <laughs> I can't believe this. How can I bet? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, like I love Junji Ito. I, I, he came to Canada a little while ago and I got to watch him draw live like in front of me. It was so cool. Adding to the list why you should subscribe to Jersey. I see. 
Um, but yeah, no, I just, I don't know, man. There's a lot of anime where, like, I would get so, I feel, I'm too scared to say that I don't really care for. <laughs> because, like, if I do, I feel like I'm going to, like, <laughs> I'm going to find a note on my door one night. It's like, we're coming for you. Like, I'm too scared. Like, there's so, like, there's a lot of anime I can say that I'm out and people would get so mad at me. And I'm like, I, I think that's why I stay away from anime fandoms a lot. Just because they scare me too much. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think that's the same with a lot of fandom, though, to be fair. It's always very disappointing when you live in an area where celebrities never visit. That's fair. I mean, it's kind of funky when, like, this Japanese artist came to, like, Canada to come draw, draw which was pretty cool. Um, he, he, it was, like, a live show for about an hour, and he drew, like, a, a panel. And that was really, really cool. He, like, did it all in just pen while he did a Q&A. It was so quiet in that venue because <laughs> it was like he would get because he, he doesn't speak English. Right. So then you'd have to he had like the translator beside him and then he also had like the. Yeah, he had the translator and then he also answered the questions in Japanese and the translator would have to, you know, translate the questions into English for us. Right. Or the answers into English. So it was kind of like a long process, every single question, but it was so worth it. It was so cool to watch his process. I think I learned a lot from like watching him just draw. Not if you become the celebrity. True. Become the celebrity and prove them all wrong. Well, I should respect the opinions of the whatever other people. Yeah, the opinions. Some people don't like tomatoes, for example. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> but it's just bleach. Yeah, see, that's a good example of why I'm too scared. <laughs> people are very passionate about anime which i think is great like it's great to be passionate about something but i i am too scared too scared of anything to do with anime fandom right um there's a very long list of anime that i will not touch because i am too scared of that fandom these intense anime fans who worship their favorite series that yeah <laughs> i wish yeah, I know. I'm too scared. Too scared of the people who worship the characters of the the series, right? I'm like... I, I think I used to be like that. I was very, like, um, quiet about it, though. Like, I won't say... I won't constantly, like... I won't berate anybody for not liking a series, or I won't, like, you know, get all up on someone because they're, like don't like a character that I like, right? You know, whatever, just like whatever you like. They, they're not real. <laughs> it's a show, right? It's like, whatever, man. Um, but some people aren't like that. And I think that takes it really, really far, right? No, know, know your boundaries, man. Like, if you're not like, if you're way too intense with something. Oh my God, finally. <laughs> now, how do I draw reflections? <laughs> Off to my references. Mm, I see. I could make them just like a perfect kind of... I could do that. Okay. I want you guys to understand that it's bleach and bleach is bleach and that makes bleach to bleach. Yeah. Yeah, no. I... <laughs> Listen, it's kind of like my love of Kirby, you know? I really, really love Kirby, but I'm not about to like... You know? <laughs> like what you like. Don't like what you don't like. It was kind of like what Voltron was a really long time ago, if any of you know what that is. Um, I'm pretty sure that fandom died the second that the show ended. But, yeah, no, that was that was a crazy fandom. I don't think I could have ever been active in it. Because I know, I knew a few people who were active within it, and I was so scared of that fandom. Like, as much as I loved, I was, I loved that show, dude. Right? I was so, so into that show, and I was horrified of the fandom. The Voltron fandom, I have never seen anything scarier. <clears throat> like the industry, I know when people are overanalyzing anime for a living. I'm like, these people have too much time, they me. Just, you don't destroy my childhood that I still need to go through. No, no, no. Just, you know, enjoy things. 
enjoy things, but don't berate other people for not enjoying the same things. That's my, that's my takeaway. Kirby is cool and epic. It's scary cute. Do you keep the video up after you're done? We always do. There will always be a live stream replay afterwards available to watch if you do not, um, if you can't stay for the whole thing. Every single time that we live stream, there will always be a replay available. Enjoy the things that you watch, right? Enjoy everything that you have to offer. Right? You only get one one childhood and you only get one you know, experience at a lot of things, right? You only get you only get one first time, right? Especially when it comes to watching anime or watching shows or anything like that, right? And enjoy it. And you should enjoy it. Just don't go overboard. <laughs> you know, there's no need to send somebody um d-word threats just because they said that they didn't like xyz character right because those kinds of people do exist and they're terrifying and it's why lots of people like to make fun of uh very passionate individuals YouTube, I had a bad time with a job recruiter. Didn't even know how to send emails. I don't work with email much anymore, to be honest. Like, I do sometimes, but that's only if, like, I have to work with an invoice. Other than that, it's like, I don't really use email much. It's like, especially with the studio, we mostly work in Discord, so. <laughs> Understandable. Oh, the clouds. The clouds. I'm struggling with these a little bit, but it's okay. I don't want to make them too crazy. Because it's the undersides of the clouds, so I have to, like, you know. Figure out certain things. <laughs> the society, dude. The society that we live in, bro. Oh, I can't reselect it. Uh... Oh, I can control Z, though. Ha ha ha. Genius. All right, let's look at my references again because I don't remember exactly what I was doing. There's like almost no. Okay. Happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. Yes, indeed. Oh, my old art teacher hated Bob Ross. <laughs> don't, I, I loved my old art teacher. Don't get me wrong. I loved her. She hated Bob Ross. And she still went as him for Halloween one year. Jay, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> You know, she hated Bob Ross. And I, we were all like, but why? And she's like, well, you know. And I was like, no, we don't know. <laughs> I don't think she ever fully explained why she didn't like Bob Ross. But I like Bob Ross. I'm giving some variety to the blues. Because I know that there shouldn't really be that much variety to the blues. But I kind of want to give it a little bit of more, you know. That kind of works. Jesse works via Discord now. True. You live in the Bermuda Triangle. That's pretty epic, dude. <laughs> How much money do you get? That is a question I'm not answering. Yeah. Um, she called me bro is better than meeting a celebrity. Dude, I call everybody bro. Bro, dude. Epic sweat. Uh, let's see. Can I select this? Oh my goodness. Let's turn down tolerance then. Because that's not gonna work if I do that. Turn it down more. What? Why is it like that? Oh, it's because I'm selecting the wrong layer. Oh well. Haha, there we go. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's fix this now to make this a little bit cleaner. Oh yeah, we're gonna go over time. That's okay. She was quite the definition of an art nerd, though. That's true. Alright, if you guys are wondering, Jay and I went to the same school. Um, but, yeah, no, she was, our old art teacher was definitely the definition of an art nerd. I miss her. She was really good. She was a great art teacher. Really encouraging. 
really, really good at what she did. Really passionate. You can tell that she was so passionate about art. <laughs> Palm brush. Show her brush suit. 50,000 pounds per sec. Um, well, I I mean, I wish, but... <laughs> um, I mean, we live in Canada, so it's still dollars. <laughs> the studio is based in Canada. So we still work in dollars, not pounds. Me too, she was so nice, yeah. Yeah, I miss my old art teachers. I had a really cool, um, when I went to college, I had a really cool pre-production prof too, a really cool animation teacher. Um, I used to go to school for game art, for those who don't know. Um, and our, my pre-production prof was really, really good at what he did. And it was like, you could tell that he loved what he did too. He was like, he got so excited whenever he talked about other people's artwork. <laughs> like he was always like, look at this guy's work though, it's so cool, right? <laughs> He was always so excited. He was like, this is how you get your stuff looking. Like, it's really, really awesome, you know? Like, he was a dad, so he was, like, he was very much into, like, really hyping up artwork and, like, really, you know, hyping up just kind of, like, the, the love that he had for art, which I, I really love in teachers. It's like, I love to see when they're passionate, you know? What is school like in Canada? What is the school in Canada? Or like what's school like in Canada? My art teachers weren't the best, honestly. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. She taught me to work hard versus believe in talent. Yeah. You know, it's like the the thing where it's like, um, I guess it's like the hard work beats talent unless talent works hard kind of deal. Sake of privacy, the streamer unfortunately cannot disclose that information. Oh, like where I went to school. Yeah, no, I can't say that. <laughs> I can talk about the school system, though, how that works, but I can't say where we went to school. That's a little bit too personal, but I can talk about the school system. Or like, I guess what school is like kind of where I am. Our college. Yeah, no, I can't say that. I can't say what college I went to. Sorry. But there are a lot of art colleges and unis in Canada. Some are better, some are worse. Hi, Jesse. Can you speak Spanish? Uh, no, I cannot, Mia. Um, my cousins can speak Spanish. I cannot speak Spanish. Um... I speak English and can read French, but I can't speak it very well. <laughs> Not anymore, anyway. But I can read French kind of okay. Yeah, so that gives it a little bit more depth. And then I can fix this thingy. Oops. No, let's do this. Whoops, that's not the right color. Let's do this. And then let's turn down my tolerance a little bit. Select this again. Let's go. What do you think? Um, what do you think of when you pick images for backgrounds? Um, for me, usually it's a feeling. It's like what I what I really like to see. Um, it's like for for when I picked like my reference image here, I was like I, I wanted to feel something when I saw it. Right, most of the time that's how I pick my references. If it's like for conceptual work, right, I'm like if I don't feel anything with my reference, I'm not going to use it. Right, it's like I want to be able to like. I want it to inspire me, right? If my image doesn't inspire me, then I'm not going to use it, right? There's a lot of other images of rice patties that I could use. But I didn't because they didn't feel as nice, you know? Hey, Jesse, can you speak fish? I cannot, unfortunately. I wish I was gifted that talent, but unfortunately I am not. I do not speak fluent fish. 
suggestion on good art colleges in Canada are the best ones. Some of the best ones include Sheridan. Um, Sheridan is a really, really good one. Um, that's where animators go. Cause most of the time, if you're really good, then Disney will hire you straight from Sheridan. Um, there's also Vancouver film school, which I think a lot of people really, really like to go to, um, again, for film, um, OCAD, Ontario College of Art and Design University, the weirdest name ever, but that one is like for a lot of traditional artists or for um, kind of the fancier artists, I guess. <laughs> I don't think so. She can speak 100% Kurdish. Oh, that I can do. I will not do it on stream, but I can do that. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> Yeah, Sheridan, OCAD, and Seneca are all pretty well known. Um, but yeah, definitely depends on where, what kind of program you're going on into. Sheridan is definitely up there, though. But there are lots of art places all across Canada. The ones that just end up being the most popular are kind of like the Ontario-born ones. I want to change my lining color here because I think that some of the lines can be a little bit more green. A little bit less black, I suppose. Kind of gives it a little bit more interest. Yeah, let's fix this too. Because I think that I can make this a little bit better. Let's do this then. Oh, I should turn up my tolerance a little bit. Ah! Alright, hang on. Deselect. These. Okay, cool. This is what I get for not doing things in different layers, but also I'm lazy, so like I don't care enough. <laughs> I'm kidding. I care enough, but like I, I don't like doing a lot of layers, so. How long did it, uh, wait, I can't believe my favorite art YouTuber answered me all. <laughs> Where are your favorite? I'm honored. Um, how long did it take you to learn perspective? Um, long time. Very long time. <laughs> um, perspective takes a long time to learn, especially to get right, right? It's one thing to learn it. It's another thing to learn it without needing perspective guidelines. I still need perspective guidelines a lot of the time, right? If it's something a little more organic like this, I don't. But like if it's like with buildings or anything like that, I still 100% need my perspective guidelines. Um, especially with more complex stuff. Ah, that looks better. Um, I definitely still need my guidelines. Oh, let's do the shadow then because I realized I didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, it took a long, long time to learn how to do that sort of stuff. Um, let's lock that and let's start to color this as well. Yeah, for reference to canvas. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go over time. That's okay. Um, being in the prairies, I didn't know I was missing out on so many things in Canada. Oh, you're in the prairies. I understand. The students that give the schools a good reputation. That's true. For what is the white and gray in the water? Little clouds. It's reflecting the sky. Oops. Let's turn up that tolerance a little bit. Yeah, okay. That works. I'll live with it. I can just fix the rest of it manually. Fish. Yes. The the sky fish are what are in the water. No, they're clouds. I feel like I'm not great at drawing clouds from below. I feel like I can draw them when it's like they're on their side, but it's hard to draw when it's like they're drawing them like as if they're being reflected from the bottom. And I'm like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I should have looked up a reference, but like, oh well. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the good thing about this character being so small on the composition is that I don't have to worry too much about making the details crazy accurate in a lot of places. I can just kind of say that they're there. Uh, 
but especially in some other areas I can. Oh man, let's turn off the expand for a second. Okay. How do you know which brushes to use for what? I have been using the same two brushes this entire time. <laughs> um, mainly it's just knowing what, like, um, what textures you want in certain areas, right? I want something a little more textury or a little more rough for the rice patty portion, so I used the rough brush. For my lines, I wanted something sharper, so I switched to the pen tool, right? It's all just knowing what kind of shape you want because there's no real right or wrong brush to use for anything it's all just about like what you want um anything to look like right what kind of feeling you want what kind of you know there's never a right or wrong always just what you feel like you want when it comes to choosing brushes <laughs> inspiration sky fish i'll show them it flying fish Hi, Jazzy. You look so cute. Hello, Daria. Welcome in. Daria is the lovely individual. If you see the thumbnails for the streams, Daria is the individual who makes them. So welcome. I'm glad you could come in. Jazzy, this is lovely. I love the cloud reflections. Lol, I wouldn't have even thought of that. Thank you, Irvinya. Um, that's that's all just because I looked at references. And <laughs> I don't think I would have done the cloud reflections if I didn't see the references. But yeah. <laughs> Kahoot, Kahoot, Kahoot. I love Kahoot. Kahoot is my... Everybody hated it. Whenever I made, whenever I was, uh, I used to volunteer um, at a few places and I, um, sometimes I would be the one to make Kahoots, right? Because like we would have activities where we would have to be like creating a Kahoot, right? And everybody would hate it when I would create Kahoots because I like to make my Kahoots as difficult as possible. I'm like, listen, if it's not, it's not as fun if it's not difficult, right? It's like, if everybody gets the same kind of answer and they know what's going to happen, then it's not as fun, right? So I like to make mine as, like, challenging as possible. So everybody hated it whenever I would make a Kahoot. And it was the best thing ever, just to watch them struggle. I'm sorry, that sounds like bad, but it was really funny. <laughs> Can I do this? Why is it? Why is it being like this? Like, why... All right, whatever, I guess. I don't know why it's like, bruh. Okay, do I really have to turn up my tolerance that high? Like, do I really have to like, man, that's annoying. Oh well. But yeah, though everybody hated it when I made cahoots. It was so funny. <laughs> the power of references, yeah. Science class memories. For me, it was English class. I remember we had to make a Kahoot because we had to do a... Um, our, our assignment was we had to make a parody of a Macbeth, of like Macbeth, right? Based on the act that we got. So my group had Act 5. And we had to make a parody of the um, Shakespeare original, right? So we decided to make ours about like millennials, right? Because we could. We all like a 94 on that. It was so fun. Um, but uh, we also had to plan a game, right? We had to make an activity. And we decided to do Kahoot because, you know, easy, right? And they were like, Jess, you can be in charge of the Kahoot. And I was like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it was painful. It was so funny watching everybody struggle. They're like, what are these questions? Why are they so hard? And I'm like, well, it makes you fight for the fight for the prizes more. Right? Your fault that you weren't paying attention. Or they were, and they were just... They probably were, but I just made all of the questions really hard, you know? But it was fun. That was a good time. I miss those days. That was a, that was a good time. <laughs> Gosh, Jesse's the devil himself. Dude, I'm not that bad compared to some other people who I've met who like to make their cahoots and their... um. Yeah, no, I'm not as bad. Some other people, Kahoot makers I've met. Some people make theirs, like, almost impossible, right? One guy I met, actually, who really who I volunteered with, he loved to give uh, the kids that we volunteered with, right? Because we it was mostly, like, youth that we volunteered with. And there was uh, one time when we had to make 
Oh my god. It was it was a cahoot, right? But he decided he was like, guys, guys, why don't we just put in a bunch of really really hard math problems? And we were like, dude, but why? And he was like, because it's funny, right? And we were like, okay. <laughs> Everybody struggled so hard with that cahoot. I've never seen anybody struggle so bad. Even with mine, right? Some people could, like, guess it, right? But, like, those were hard, dude. Like, some of them were, like... It was, like, algebra that was, like, way too high level for the kids that were getting them. Right? It was funny, though. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh. Hi, Jesse. Love your channel. Greetings from Peru. Hello. I'm glad that you enjoy. It's not just me. There's a whole studio of us, but I'm just the one that's in front of the camera. But I'm glad that you enjoy our content. Haha. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually almost done here. I just got to do the shading and a little bit more of the coloring, but we're almost good. Oh my gosh. Jesse is almost a devil himself. Almost. We're almost there. One of my favorite things to design is fauna, right? Like alien life or like animals that don't exist, right? So this guy, this little chicken thing here um, was a product of a, I think my friend and I joking around. <laughs> they were like, so what's like the, cause like this, this whole group of characters, right? These kind of like hybrid characters. I, I made them in high school and like the, with my with my best friend we would talk back and forth about it or like just some of my closest friends we'd talk back and forth about like ideas and whatever and i remember when i was talking about like the fauna right because i had to come up with farm animals and they were like so what's like the equivalent to like chicken and cows and everything like that right because they are technically like chicken and cows and all that right so like it'd be kind of weird if they you know also ate chicken and cows and stuff you know <laughs> so we had to come up with like other creatures and whatever and like it was so much fun just kind of illustrating and taking inspiration from the actual chicken and cows and pigs and all that to create these kind of new creatures right kind of like similar to it's why i like subnautica so much because it's really cool to see like how marine biologists took you know earth uh marine biology and created it and like kind of mixed it up with alien life to make it feel like something new even though if you really look at the designs you can see where they got a lot of inspiration from them Right, the ghost leviathan was very clearly inspired by the bobbit swarm, right? Which is an actual creature. Um, there are these gastropod things where clearly they look like gas masks, right? Um, right, there's a lot of rays that like you know just look like manta rays. Um, oh my god, there's a lot of like really really cool ones. I can name a bunch of them off my head, but like there's. It's one of my favorite things. I just love fauna design. So yeah, these guys were the uh, the chicken equivalent. <laughs> so I sat there with my friend and we started just like doodling. And I just kind of drew this. And she was like, that's the dumbest design I've ever seen. That's what we need to use. That's what you need to use. And I was like, okay. So these are like the chickens. <laughs> They're so dumb looking, but man, I love them. I love your voice, Jesse. It gets really high pitched when you greet someone or reply to a nice comment. You can hear an accent when you explain something you like. It gets deep when you tell a story from life. <laughs> yeah, my voice changes, I guess. Looks like Doctor Who characters. Um, sure. I never watched Doctor Who. My cousins love Doctor Who, though. Pro algebra is easy. I am not a math person. I dropped math like when I hit grade twelve. There was like no way I was going to continue that, you know. I wasn't bad at it. I just didn't like math at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could do it. I still got, like, high 80s and whatever, but, like, I didn't like it. <laughs> so I was like, never mind. We're done. We're done with this. Uh, but, yeah, I'm almost done here. I just got to uh, do the shading, and then we should actually be good. And, then, oh, I should probably add some filters onto this, too, because I think that would make it look a little bit nicer. Make it pop a little bit more. Oh, let's... Change this layer to multiply just so I can check the color. Oops, check change it to multiply just so I can check. Okay, let's make that darker. Um whoopsie doopsie. Yeah, we can make it just a little bit more intense. That way it doesn't seem quite as crazy. Oh, I also drew over this. Yeah, let's not do that. Drop math after grade eleven me. <laughs> yeah, me too, Jay. 
I was like, I was done with it, dude. Like, no way. Grade 12 was so easy because I dropped so many of, like, the quote-unquote hard classes, right? I, I stopped taking science after grade 10. And I was like, I'm done with it. As much as I like science, I was like, I, I didn't have room for it. Right. Same with like French. I really wish I did continue French, but like I didn't have room for it. So I just didn't. Um, and yeah, science as well. Right. I mean, I kind of felt OK not taking science after I heard like, wow, my friends were like struggling. But, you know, <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I just, I, I wanted to really, really focus on art. So my entire grade 12 year was all arts and psychology and English, right? Cause I also really, really enjoyed writing. And I guess that should have been a sign that I should have gone into like illustration or some kind of like illustrative arts instead of game art, but whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, but you know, whatever you live in, you learn, right? And you know, I learned that I preferred to be an illustrator over time. How did the color change so suddenly? This um, is using layer styles. So right now I am using a multiply layer. And this kind of gives you, um, depending on whatever color you choose, it gives you really, really fast shadows. Um, so I'm using a multiply layer just to give me really fast shadows. What's nice about this is like you can keep your shadow color unified um, because your shadows will change colors depending on the color of your light. Right. If you want to learn more about that, we had a lighting stream all about that. I actually really liked that stream. It was really fun to teach. Um, but yeah, no, the um your your light, depending on what color your light is, your shadows will change. So your shadow color will change. So that's why I'm like it's it's that's why I prefer kind of using a multiply layer because you know if my if my uh color or my light is all like kind of white. Or no, if my light is all kind of yellow, right, yellowish, then the opposite color, like the contrasting color of yellow is kind of like a purple or a blue, like a deep violet, right? So it's good to kind of know that actually because of that, I should probably make these shadows purplish instead. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Maybe a little bit more to the violet side. Yeah, okay, cool. Lighting stream. Yeah, we had a lighting stream a little while ago. Um, do a lot of people take French? We It's a mandatory thing in Canada. So when you're in grade four until grade nine, you have to take French. Um, unless if you have like a special exception. But um, like I had the option not to take French. But if you, unless you have like a special kind of like learning exception, then you don't, then you have to take French um, up until ninth grade. And then you can drop it. But yeah, there's lots of things you can do with digital, right? It makes it a lot easier to add shadows, makes it a lot easier to make your color more cohesive, right? It just ends up looking nicer, right? There's a lot of things you can do. Um, let's see here. Let's do that again. There we go. I wish I didn't drop it after grade nine either. Yeah, right. I too also wish I didn't drop it. I, I kind of like, I want to continue learning French just because I want to learn a second language, but you know, it's like, I've learned that I learned the best when I, like, if it's not art, I learned the best if I actually have a teacher. So like, like I can, I don't have the, <laughs> I don't have the initiative to keep up with like a learning app or anything like that. So I'd love to, relearn it sometime. I took French all four years. I didn't do anything with it. I understand. That's valid. Man, you took it all four years? Hey. Hello, bunny doll. Welcome in. That's commitment, dude. I could never... 
Like, I mean, I wish I did, but I didn't. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, because I took, um, my grade 12 year was, uh, English, families in Canada, so, like, psychology and sociology, um, two classes for that, and then two different art courses, and then co-op, which is how I got introduced to Wayne Canvas, and that's how I started working here. All right, we're close to being done. It's a lot of layers in this one. <laughs> I didn't expect there to be this many, but I'm having fun with it. Oh, you just wanted the piece of paper that said you did it. That's valid, not gonna lie. Honestly, I would have been happy with that piece of paper too. But I mean, I got some extra pieces of paper because I won, um, I won the art award, like the overall arts, um, award. So like, that's the award that you get. For those who don't know, that's the award that you get if you have like some of the highest grades or like are chosen by the arts department. Um, so you get every single department have one of those, right? So I got the art department one. Um, some friends of mine, actually, I think a friend of mine got the English or history one. One of my friends got the history one. I'm kind of just adding some extra flair to certain things. I say mouse in French. Oh, I know this. So, um, what do you think is the hardest part of drawing digitally? A lot of it, I think, is like the final touches. I always think the final touches are the hardest when it comes to digital because your final touches are what can make or break a piece, you know? It's like sometimes if your final touches don't look as nice, then your piece just doesn't look as nice, you know? <laughs> Like your final touches are everything when it comes to an art piece. Okay. Now let's do some overlays. Because I think it needs a little bit of them. It could need a little bit of them. Oops, let's change this to layer. There we go. Huh. Yeah, it gives it a little bit of a nice glow. Maybe I should make that green. Ooh, that's kind of nice. I'll make it a little bit deeper. It gives it a bit of a deep kind of look. That isn't really what I want, though. I kind of want... Not that cold, either. I want something a little bit warmer. You kind of get, like, yeah. I guess I had it right with orange to start off with. <laughs> yeah, that is a little bit nicer. If I kind of get it like that. Overlays make you just like the slightest bit of difference with your overall colors, but it makes them pop a lot more. It makes it feel a little bit more cohesive, which is why I always add them, especially if you have like a final kind of illustration thing. Um, let's change this bit though, because I realize there's some parts that I kind of want to fix real quick. Can I still fix it? Uh oh, I don't think I can. Ah, I might as well just manually do it then because sometimes you just kind of got to brute force it and then you'll get it. <laughs> there are some areas I do want to fine tune just a little bit and then we can call it quits for the day. Just a couple of sections. Helps you get that temperature, yeah. Makes it feel a little bit warmer, makes it feel a little bit colder, you know. This makes it a little bit more like kind of afternoon-y, I suppose. I think I'm gonna make this yellow instead. Oh, the yellow is good. The yellow is better, yeah. So he is an interesting sounding word, yeah. A lot of French words are kind of interesting. <laughs> You've never heard them before. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this stream, though, guys. Um, thanks so, so much for joining for everybody who is in here. Um, wait, when do you usually stream? No, um, usually we stream at from uh, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EDT um, or Eastern time. 
Um, but yeah, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this stream. Thanks so, so much for joining everyone. Um, what's, oh, sorry. I didn't see this question for what is the lighting on the top of the hair of the skin and that, well, that's just reflection. So on top of the hair's reflections on the skin, that little, um, like the red part that's body blushing. So that's really just like, um, to kind of make it a little more popped, um, makes it pop a little bit more. Um, but yeah, guys, sorry. Third time I'm doing this. Thanks so, so much for joining. Um, once again, if you didn't know, we are not only a YouTube channel, we are also an art school. So please check out the classes that we have to offer. I am one of the instructors along with some of the other lovely people that you see in the chat. Um, so be sure to check those out um, when you can. And this file, along with the kind of mini lesson that we did, will be available as JPEGs on the Discord. So be sure to check those out as well, our social media. Um, so be sure to check those out when you can and join the Discord. You'll be able to talk to me there and talk to other people that you've seen in the stream. So be sure to see all of them there. But if you would like access to all this huge amount of layers that I have done for this piece, then you're going to have to join our Patreon. And that's where you'll get access to my working files every other week, depending on your tier. Um, but we also have limited run spots there for discounts on our classes and other things. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. But yeah, guys, thanks so, so much for joining everyone. And I'll see y'all. I actually don't know what we're streaming exactly next week, but I'll see y'all then. Um, we'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.